Hello my friends, welcome to this new practical activity and the first practical activity actually of part three classification. I'm super excited as you might hear by the sound of my voice because this is one of my favorite parts and actually you will see that the case study we will do together is pretty fun. So I can't wait to start, welcome back. And so now here we go, we are about to enter a new branch of machine learning where this time we won't predict a continuous numerical value like in part two regression, but this time we will predict a category, you know, a class. Like for example, you know, a binary variable zero or one. One classic example is actually to do classification to predict a tumor, you know, whether a tumor is benign or malignant. And this is actually the case study we'll do at the end, you know, when I will teach you on how to select the best classification model. But that will come at the end. First, we will do a fun case study with which we will learn how to build each of our classification models. And there you go, my friends. It is in this tutorial that I will explain the problem of this case study. All right, so before we start, let's just make sure once again, everyone here is on the same page. So right before this tutorial, I gave you the link to this folder containing all the codes and data sets in the 10 parts. So make sure to connect to that link. And now, now we should all be on the same page. And there you go. We're going to go into part three classification to tackle our first model logistic regression. I hope you enjoyed the intuition lectures and mostly that you're now ready to put your well-learned theory into practice. And we're going to put it into practice first with Python, with which we're going to re-implement from scratch and step by step the whole logistic regression implementation. So as you can see in this Python folder, you have two files. First, well, that logistic regression implementation in IPYNB format, which you can open with either Google Collaboratory or Jupyter Notebook. And you have the data set, which is called social network ads. So let's open it. And now let me explain what the problem is about. All right, so let's imagine our favorite car company. I won't mention a name here because I don't want to do any kind of advertising, but let's imagine your favorite car company. And let's imagine that you are a data scientist for that company. And your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to predict which of your previous customers will buy a brand new, beautiful SUV just created by your favorite car company. All right, so your favorite car company has just released this brand new, beautiful, irresistible SUV. And the general manager of this car company has asked you, you know, the most talented data scientist of the company, to predict which customers will buy that new SUV, you know, with the highest conversion rate. And to help you, because, you know, this general manager has some minimum data science skills and knows and understands that in order to predict this, you need data, right? You need data on which to train your classification model to predict what needs to be predicted, meaning which customers will buy that brand new SUV. And so there you go. That's exactly the data that your general manager gave you. And in this data set, well, each row corresponds to different customers. And for each of these customers, there you go, I'm about to reveal the features and the dependent variable. For each of these customers, well, this general manager collected the age and it collected the estimated salary because, you know, when a customer buys a new car with some kind of credit or whatever, well, it has to provide the estimated salary in the form. So that's how it got the estimated salary. And finally, that's your dependent variable, of course, the purchased variable telling whether or not these customers have bought previously some older SUVs of this car company, right? So this car company has basically many makes and models of SUVs and all the zeros and the ones that you see here for each customer is saying whether or not these customers have bought one of these previous SUVs so that your model will be trained on this data set and for new customers, you know, having a different age and a different estimated salary, well, we will predict if yes or no, they will buy that new SUV. Okay, so of course, in this dependent variable purchased, zero means that the customer didn't buy any previous SUV and one means that the customer bought some previous SUVs. All right, and therefore all the future predictions that will be equal to one will probably mean 
that the customer has a high chance to buy the new SUV if of course we offer a great deal. And finally, once we predict the customers that are gonna buy the SUV, well, the final step of the strategy will be for the advertising team to post ads of this brand new SUV on social networks, and these ads will be targeted to the customers where we predict one, you know, where we predict that they're gonna buy that new SUV. All right, so you see the idea? The predictive model will target your customers, and then the advertising team will use the results of this predictive model to optimize the targeting of future customers. And that is why, you know, the name of the data set is called socialnetworkads.csv. Okay? All right, so that's the problem. I hope you like it. I hope you're excited to work on it. And so now we're going to, without further ado, start our logistic regression implementation on your favorite IDE, whether it is Google Collaboratory or Jupyter Notebook. You have the choice, but my favorite is by far Google Collaboratory. So if you love it too, follow me here. And now let's re-implement this logistic regression implementation step by step. Right now it is laying out the notebook and we're about to have it in a second. There we go. All right, so that's the whole notebook. It is in read-only mode. So right now what we have to do is to create a copy of this notebook. And to do this, we just have to click save a copy in Drive, and this will create a copy, as you can see, of this notebook in which we will be able to re-implement the whole model from scratch. All right, great. So, as usual, the first thing we're going to do is to delete all the code cells, right? Because I want you to take action, I want you to learn by doing, so I really, really want you to re-implement all these code cells from scratch. So we're going to delete all of them. To do this, we just have to click them and then click the trash button here, just do as I do, all right, and make sure not to delete the text cells because we want to keep that well highlighted structure. All right, feature scaling. So yes, there will be feature scaling for logistic regression and I will explain why. All right, so now we train the logistic regression model, break the new result, all right, and you really have everything in this implementation. You'll see that you will learn how to predict an ensemble of results. You know, in the test set, you will also learn how to predict a single result. Like, you know, when you deploy your model in production, when you want to predict a single observation. So now confusion matrix, that's to evaluate your model. And of course, the visualizations at the end. And once again, I chose a data set of only two features, right? The age and the estimated salary, so that we can indeed visualize the results in the end, on the training set and on the test set. Because remember, in the plot, each dimension corresponds to one feature, and therefore there are as many dimensions as there are features. And so since we have two features, we'll have a nice 2D plot. And that's exactly the reason why I needed to take two features. But no worries, the implementations we're about to make works for any data set, regardless the number of features. And I will prove this to you at the end of this part when deploying all our classification models on a brand new generic data set with more features. And this is how I will also teach you on how to select the best model. All right, so there you go. I hope you're excited, you know, both by the problem case study and this implementation. And now before we finish and move on to the next tutorial, well, I would like you to do a little exercise. Now that you saw the data set and understands it, and since you also have your data preprocessing template, well, there you go. The exercise is, I would like you to implement on your own the data preprocessing phase up to this step, you know, feature scaling. So basically, I would like you to implement on your own this step, importing the libraries, then this step, importing the data set, then this step, splitting the data set into the training set and test set, and finally, this last step of the data preprocessing phase, feature scaling, all right? So please try, use of course your data preprocessing template and of course your data preprocessing toolkit because indeed, in order to implement that step you will need to grab a tool of your data preprocessing toolkit and i'm sure you will find it so you can totally do this on your own there is no trap it's actually super easy and of course we will implement the solution together in the next tutorial so i can't wait to see what you end up with and i'm sure we will end up with the same thing so let's see and until then enjoy machine learning